Action, take 10. All right, let's get started. In this video, I am going to be talking about the Wanderbox Pro V3. Hi, I'm Bill, and welcome to the channel. I purchased this device in late 2023, early 2024. I may have used it in January and February of 2024 on those new moon trips. I took a lot of months off. I decided to go back out in the October new moon. I used this device for three nights at Blue Canyon Airport up in the Sierras. And then I decided to uh, come home and then drop down uh, to Death Valley Father Crowley Overlook, where I was able to hook up with Patrick Kerrigan and Christian Ralph for a night of imaging. So I'm at the point now where I feel I can recommend this device as far as a hardware device that provides power and USB connectivity. I think I've had enough hours burned in based on those recent two trips plus the time I've used it at home to build new dark libraries and everything where this has been on for extended hours and I've not had any type of elect electrical issues. I think the box is very well machined and made. The fit and finish looks good. And um, so I am now in a position to make a recommendation as far as hardware and providing USB and power distribution. I believe I spent $449 at the time on the purchase and there might have been some small shipping charge and I received a device from in seven to 10 days. So now let's go over to the desktop and take a look at how it connects into Nina. Oh, let's first take a look uh, what you should see on the screen is this is what comes in the box, some cables, some temperature probes, environmental sensor, and if we take a look at the outside, this is where I plug in my 12 volt DC power. This port I use to power my ZWO AM5 mount. And then, of course, where the connection to the PC, some USB 2.0 ports, some uh, switch ports here, which I don't know specifically what they do. I don't use them. Some USB 3.1 ports, some more USB 2.0 ports. And then uh, this is where your temperature probe goes. This is where your environmental sensor uh, would go. And here is a look at physical size compared to the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance. I replaced the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance only because I wanted more USB ports and I felt I was uh, willing to take a risk, if any, by purchasing the Wanderer Box a Pro V3 and I'm happy with my decision to purchase it. The Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance was a great device. It performed well. It did what it uh, was meant to do. I had no issues with it, but I really just needed more uh, USB ports and the Wanderer Pro uh, V3 satisfies that requirement. Okay, so let's get on to the desktop over here. Uh, where are we at? Where's my mouse? Okay, so I am a Nino user and uh, let's just take a little look at the software that comes or that is associated with the Wanderer uh, products. Now this is a piece of software that I really have only used limited uh, in a limited way. Uh, we'll connect to it and I basically used it to go in and make sure that all my ports were 
live or powered. Also has a uh, interface for my Wander Astro Mini V2 rotator. Again, I don't use this to manage the rotator. I manage it through Nina. And then when you come back into this interface, inter interface you uh, can pick uh, the type of device. Has some basic information here. I don't have the sensor connected right now. And I've yet to use the temperature probes for uh, dew heaters. Just wanted to let you know that it is this piece of software is available. I can't speak to the quality of the software, uh, the the UI, and how it may fit or may not fit your needs and those type of things. But it is there. All right, let's go ahead and connect the box. Uh, go into settings. You have an option here of what type of box you're going to connect. Wander Box Pro V3 is my selection. This pops up here. You can rename ports, notate them, do a lot of things. I'm using it in a very basic form, so I haven't taken the time to label ports and those type of things, but uh, this uh, capability is available. All right. So Nina sees the device as a switch and therefore there is some opportunity to control the switch. I have not done that. I don't have a need to do that. I think, again, as a traveler, my needs are very simple. I need some USB ports. I need some power ports. I don't have an observatory. I don't have to worry about a rain sensor open and closing the dome and all those type of things. But my expectation is, but I don't know that for sure, that the plug-in sequencer power-ups may enable you to have some control over the switch for scripts that you may have, like startup and turning ports on, and then at the end of the night, turning them off. So again, um, I want to make it clear that what I am basically um, uh, making the recommendation on is the piece of hardware itself and its performance providing regulated power and USB distribution. Again, I think I've got enough hours burned in on this device. I also have been burning it in at home doing uh, rebuilding uh, dark libraries and things like that, that I can make <clears throat> a recommendation on the device as far as a hub that will provide power and a USB connectivity. So um, that's uh, what I wanted to share. And um, if you have any questions about the device, feel free to reach out to me and I will uh, do what I can to answer your questions. Other than that, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And I will be doing an update on the Wander Astro uh, Mini V2 Rotator. And uh, probably next new moon uh, is when I will uh, put that into service. Other than that, thanks again for dropping into the video, clear skies.